All right, so what we have here, we're getting some intermittent um, disconnection between the controller and the unit. Um, this is generally an antenna issue or an ECU issue. The ECU in a Lift um, 3 or Lift 4 board is this box right here. The Lift 3 has an external antenna, which is the Bluetooth antenna, that comes out here. The antenna runs up to the front of the board and through this hole here. This is just like a stopper, like a wine bottle stopper. And then the antenna actually comes up to about this area on the board, um, you know, right, right kind of in here, maybe a little bit farther, like up in here. It's a stick antenna. Um, usually it's not a controller issue. The controller, the V2 controller either works or it doesn't. This is generally not the issue. You know, people think it's like changing the batteries in here. That's generally not the problem. Um, the problem is going to be internal. It's going to be a, an ECU issue. So, you know, this is a pretty beat up board. You can see scratches. There's probably some um, repairs on here um, over the years. And if you get water inside, if you get water inside of this uh, carbon shell, um, it goes into the foam and that water can cause issues with connection for that Bluetooth antenna. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the number one. So there's a couple other go-to um, items we'll check off the list. First, we're going to remove this antenna, pull it out from the inside and just check for condensation on the antenna. So there's a couple of bolts you see here. This is a, a bolt. There's one here. I think those two are the only two we really need to remove to um, get access to that. I'm going to pull this out. See that water on there? That water means that there's water inside this board. And that's what you're looking for. You're just looking for, you know, the problem is not the water on the antenna. The problem is the water inside of this board. You know, it's going to be in the foam of this board. We need to get that fixed. So the e-box is not the issue. It's water inside the foam. Okay, so we know what the problem is. It's water inside the foam inside that board. Um, first step is to figure out uh, how the water's getting inside that board. I've seen it be, you know, a tiny little crack that, you know, it's very hard to find. My favorite method to finding cracks or holes is to actually apply some pressure inside of that um, board cavity, just with like a hand pump, <clears throat> pump it in through the uh, antenna hole. And then once it's pressurized, use a bucket of soapy water to kind of soap up the outside of that unit and you'll, you'll see bubbles coming out. You can find really small holes that way. Um, our hole ended up being pretty big. I actually found three holes. Two of them were small, and then one of them was a huge crack on the end. I'll show you okay, that. Okay, so we have our pump with the pressure gauge. There it is. This is a double action pump. I have it in single action mode. Um, so I can pump this all the way up, and kind of slowly push it down. What we've done is on the end of the cone, attachment of this. I just put some tape on there. I'm going to stick this inside that hole. And then, uh, let's see. Once it's inside there, I'm going to pump down and put a little bit of pressure in. I like to keep it around four PSI. And it's leaking. You can, I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it leaking. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure in that hole. This is a great way to find the leak if you don't know where it is. I know where the leak is. You can see it right there. See that bubbling out? I don't know if you can see it on here. Yeah, there it is. See that? Okay, step one complete. We found one of the holes. I'm actually going to pump it up later after I fix the first big hole to find the other two. Um, the hardest part of this whole process is actually getting the water out of the board, um, which is the next step in this process. All right, so the way we're going to figure out if we have all the water out is we're going to weigh it to start with, and we're going to consistently weigh it as we go down the road. Now, this unit has the crack on the nose, so I flipped it upside down, and I'm going to basically let gravity kind of bring all that water out that hole to the bottom. Um, I, I basically just kind of saran wrap this sucker to a cart and set it on a soft piece of grass with some paper towels at the bottom and we'll just let it kind of drain and then we'll weigh it as we go along to make sure water's still coming out of it. So day two weigh in, 
um, 439 ounces. So we're going to drop six ounces, which is almost a cup of water. You can see it's still pretty wet. So we're going to flip it back upside down and leave it for another day or two and just, uh, you know, wait, wait to see how much water we can get out of there. Okay, so we left it for another day and the low um, weight mark was at um, 431. So we lost almost two cups of water out of there. Can't get any more to come out. I ended up kind of twirling up paper towels and sticking them in that antenna hole too and pulling them back out to get as much water out of there as possible. But I think we're ready to move on to the next step which is going to be um, repairing the holes. So like I said, originally there's one big hole. Um, I ended up actually drilling kind of a little, uh, maybe eighth inch hole in that big crack in the front to uh, you know alleviate some of that, to just make sure that we can get maximum water out of there. But that big repair in the front, that's the one we're gonna repair first right there. And then there's two other holes that we also had, so I'll patch those as well. Once they're patched, we can move on to um, testing on the water. Okay, so we're gonna get this patched up. If you guys are curious how to do uh, an epoxy resin repair on an e-foil, I actually made a video about that exact subject. On this one, I'm gonna use some fiberglass cloth and some filler to kind of fill the big one here, and the other ones I'm just gonna use straight up epoxy resin. Black's really easy because uh, when you sand it out, it just kind of matches, you just sand it down so it's, it's glossy, and you're good to go. Okay, all right, we got this baby done. Uh, the board's back together and uh, sealed up and dry. We're gonna hook the battery back up here. Um, I think I'm gonna have to sync the remote as well. So we'll get, turn that guy on. Let's see if we have a connection here. We don't, so we'll sync this quick. Yeah, 30% of the battery. I'm just gonna run it like this for a while. Make sure there's no sniffles. I get, you know, connection way far away. I'm getting perfect, I'm getting perfect reception. I just walked like 20 feet away and still had it. I think we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be good with this, uh, this fix. Out here in the dry suit, because it's kind of cold in Bellingham, um, we're gonna take this board out and make sure that the intermittent uh, cutoff isn't happening anymore and uh, get this one off the books. Love the dry suits for days like today. It's not cold per se, but just easy. Put, off, put in the dry suit, go out. I'll stay dry, I'll stay warm. It's easy to get out in the water. Okay, so I drained the battery on this sucker with no intermittent issues. So we're gonna call this good and put a checkbox in the wind category for us. Um, intermittent power failure is typically caused by water inside the board. Even if you don't think you have damage, do that pump test and the antenna check to see if there's water inside that board. Hopefully this video helps you out and you enjoyed watching.